Hi everyone, the goal of this video is to show you how we can win the race condition by using the Winback Debugger to help us win that race. The first step to do so is to enable the Microsoft Driver Verifier functionality in the Windows kernel in order to detect when invalid memory is accessed. We're going to use the Winback Debugger to patch the memory in order to block the recovery thread at a certain time so we can effectively win the race taking as much time as we need to confirm the mental model and finally once the setup is done we're going to effectively run the binary and show that we can win the race in order to confirm our understanding of the vulnerability okay let's get started so we'll first go over all the instructions and then we'll show them uh, in the virtual machines. The lab we want to focus on now is in the part two archive. So we're going to need to extract it. And because the labs are handled with CMake, we need to rerun the build.bat script in order to generate the Visual Studio additional files related to the new labs. You should have done it already, but if not, I advise you do a snapshot of your target VM before any more modification. It is because we are going to enable Verifier in order to help detecting invalid memory accesses in this lab, but we will want to roll back to a VM state without Verifier for all the rest of the training. And so to enable Verifier, you can either do it from the command line or using the GUI. But basically the idea is that you modify the Verifier configuration and enable certain flags associated with the tm.sys kernel driver to indicate that you want to enable tracking certain pool allocations. Since the kernel pool is the name of the Windows kernel heap, it will allow tracking pool allocations and freeze, and it will help detecting when a freed chunk is accessed, whereas it should not be the case. Then you need to reboot the target VM where Verifier is now enabled. And after it has rebooted, you can confirm that Verifier is enabled on the tm.sys driver, either using Verifier slash query settings or directly in WinBag because the output, you'll see a specific line mentioning the verifier. When you'll try to trigger win the race condition and you want to see the use after free, you can use the bang verifier command and specify the 80 hex flag and the pool address you want information for. And this will basically dump information about when this address was allocated and freed by the tm.sys driver. And you'll get a call stack of the operation, which is invaluable information when trying to track down use after free vulnerabilities. It will tell you that that specific address was freed by other code. And if you see in the debugger that it tries to reuse that memory, you are basically watching a zoo use after free. And usually here as well, we will want to take a snapshot of the VM booted with verifier enabled. This is because the whole point of enabling verifier is to detect a crash. So the VM is likely to crash many times while testing it. So once we have made a snapshot of it, we will be able to just restore that snapshot without having to reboot the VM and it will avoid having to reattach the debugger and so on. We provide a helper script called help win the race.js, which basically allows to patch some code. It will basically patch the call ke wait for single object instruction that can help us win the race. Remember, in the variable function, there is a function call to set a notification then this function returns and there is a check on the k enlistment flag to check if it is final finalized and after that it dereferences the k enlistment reference count and it calls ke wait for single object on the resource manager mutex and that's on this ke wait for single object that we want to patch memory and so the idea is that we patch that ke wait for single object because we want to check the scenario where the sent notification change the enlistment state but does not finalize it yet then the call returns and it checks the enlistment flags so the enlistment is not finalized yet then using our patch the recovery thread is stuck forever and so it gives us time to do certain things in user node such as committing the enlistment and closing the handle to the enlistment and so this will effectively trigger finalizing the enlistment however in kernel the check on the enlistment state was done already 
and the enhancement is assumed not finalized. And so what we can do next is removing the patch and restoring the original call ke wait for single object code. And so the recovery thread continues executing and we should be able to see the use after free. At least that is the goal here. And so to help patching and patching the code, we use a winbag script written in JavaScript. And so we use the dot script load command to load that script in the first place. And that will allow defining two new commands, bang patch and bang unpatched. And when we use the bang patch command, it replaces the call instruction with a forever jump instruction as we just detailed. And when we use the bang unpatch command, it restores the call instruction bytes. In order to solve this lab, we want to make sure we use automation to load the dbg-prep.cmd script when we attach with winback, since it will allow loading the help win the race.js script that exposes the bank patch and bank unpatched commands. You should already be using dbg-prep command, but you want to make sure to uncommand loading the help win the race.js script. So once you are debugging tm recover resource manager x, like the vulnerable function, you can execute the bang patch command to install the patch. And you should see something like that when you're continuing execution. And it indicates the patch was successfully installed and that the recovery thread is blocked forever until further notice at least. Later, when you want to unblock the recovery thread, you can break in winbag and use the bank and patch command and it will uninstall the patch. And when you continue execution with the G command, the recovery thread will continue executing the code after the KE wait for single call instruction as if nothing happened. This slide is just to summarize what you need to do now. For the setup, basically you just need to first import the part two labs in Visual Studio. You need to enable verifier, modify the debug scripts to load help win the race.js and the project to use in Visual Studio is debugger race win. This slide summarizes the steps involved in solving the lab. The source code of that lab is provided entirely so you don't have to modify anything. Obviously we will have a look at it to understand what it does but you don't need to add any code and it will allow you to win the race as long as you use the debugger and patches correctly. So the code will allow to reach the TM recover resource manager vulnerable function. In the source code we will see that the second enlistment is going to be committed and consequently finalized. So this is the one we want to raise. So we will loop up to the second iteration of the loop, then use the bank patch command to block the recovery thread. Then we will be able to free the enlistment by hitting a key in the target VMs console, as this will be handled by another thread, which is just an assisting thread. Then we can break in the debugger and unblock the recovery thread using the bank and patch command. And we should be able to step in the debugger and observe the use after free. And this is just to show you an example of freed chunk being reused. So for instance, the move RGI square bracket RGI closing square bracket code is fetching the K enlistment next same RM fling pointer. And if we check what it contains with the bank pull command, we see it points to a free chunk. So this shows the use after free which indicates we won the race condition in the first place. So the first thing to do is to extract the part two labs. So as you can see here, we don't have part two in our Visual Studio project. If we go into labs, uh, Visual Studio Labs, we can see a part two.zip archive. However, in Visual Studio Labs, labs part one, we have some labs in it, but in part two, we don't have them yet. And so, all you need to do is to extract that because as you can see, it has the part two in it. So we're going to copy this into labs here. And then we're going to extract it here. It's going to act as to replace the part two CMake list.txt, which obviously exists already. Now we can delete the zip archive and we can see we have part two folders. So the last step is to regenerate the Visual Studio project to take into account the new labs. So we go into Visual Studio Labs and we just execute build.bat hello.
Now, if we go back to our Visual Studio project, we see that it's been modified outside the environment. We can reload it. And now you can see we have access to the part two labs. So now we move to the target VM and we're going to enable verifier. So the first thing is we can check that verifier is not enabled by executing the verifier query settings command. We can see none of the flags are enabled and also no driver is actually configured. So we execute the verifier slash driver tm.sys slash flags and then 809 hex. We need to do it into an admin prompt, otherwise you won't have permission. So it's telling us that we enabled certain checks relative to the pool tracking and it's, it's done on the tm.sys driver, but this requires a reboot. So we're just going to reboot the virtual machine. If it does hangs like this, you may have to reattach with the WinBag debugger from the debugger VM. Once you're attached, it's likely to unblock the target VM. So while the target virtual machine is actually booting, you can see from the WinBag debugger that driver verifier is enabled for tm.sys. And after it has booted, you can actually use the verifier command. to confirm it as well from the command line. So from that state, what we want to do is we want to do a snapshot of the virtual machine. So I'm just gonna enable SSH first. And now I'm gonna do a snapshot of virtual virtual machine. Control M. Verifier enables. So let's have a quick look to the help windarrays.js file that's going to be loaded in WinBag. So at the very end, we see the initialize script function, which is generic uh, API to actually register the extension and some commands. So here it's going to register two commands, the patch command and the end patch command. And we have the actual functions in JavaScript that is being called. So if we look first at the install patch function, we see that the first thing it does, it reloads the symbols. So the actual function names are known and we can actually set breakpoints or delete breakpoints then it's actually setting a breakpoint on a particular patch location. So the patch location is defined at the beginning of the script. We can see it's in the tm.sys module, it's in the tm recovery resource manager x and at a particular offset 27e. So we said earlier it's going to be done on the call ke wait for single object, but for implementation reasons, there is a command saying that we don't do it on the actual KE wait for single object function because of some dynamic patch that is done on this instruction. But we do it on the actual move RCX or BX that is just before. So that's why it's done on the 27E offset. That being said, if we go back to the patch location being used, we see that there is a breakpoint on this location. And when this breakpoint is set, uh, we actually define a command to execute. More specifically, we're going to execute the dx at dollar script contents dot install patch pp handler, which is a function we can define above. But basically what it's going to do, we're going to see that in, in a second. Before the patch, we see the move rcx origin code. And after the patch, we see a jump to the offset 27e, which is basically itself. So it's going to loop here forever. And it does that by patching the patch location with a jump to itself. 
So when the breakpoint hits, we see it calls this function. So this function, what it does is it executes the k command to show the backtrace and prints the output. And then it removes the patch location by calling the remove breakpoint. And if we look at the remove breakpoint function, it only supports one breakpoint. So no other breakpoints need to exist in the context. And what it is going to do is going to basically call the BC to clear the breakpoint, to remove the breakpoints on that particular breakpoint ID. So now let's have a look at the unpatch command. The unpatch command is just, again, loading the symbols to make sure the functions are known. And then it's just deleting the breakpoint, if it still exists. And in any case, it will actually restore the old code by executing the eb to edit the bytes of the patch location and just to restore the previous bytes. And if we look at the previous bytes, they are defined here. 48 8b. But really, all you need to understand is that it exposes the two commands that we need to use. So now let's have a look at the actual lab source code. We go into the debugger race win.c. So there are lots of code that we've already seen. So I'll just go over the new code. We see we've defined different core IDs. It's because we're going to want to pin certain code to specific CPU cores. And remember, in the target VM, we have defined the target VM to have several processors, at least two in this case we need for this lab. So we have the general structure we've already seen, a function that exits with a printf. This is the function that actually pins to a CPU the current um, code being executed. Then this is the handler for a second thread that will be created, which we named the assisting thread. And it's going to be passed the enlistment handle for the second enlistment. And basically what it's going to do, it's going to print some instructions, but then it's going to basically wait that we hit a key before it actually does anything. And its goal is going to be to commit the enlistment and to close the handle. So the enlistment is freed in kernel, and that's all it does. But it will only do it when we hit a key. So then we have helper function that we've already seen to deal with quid, to print the notification messages, as well as this function to get the notification from the resource manager, and this function that loops over all the available notifications. So now we look at the main function. We have the instructions of the lab, which is basically to use the patch command and then loop for the second iteration of the loop to trigger use after free on the second enlistment. But basically it called all the functions that we've seen so far. It called it create transaction manager, then recover transaction manager. Same thing for the resource manager, create resource manager and recover resource manager. It created transaction and then it creates two enlistments for that specific transaction. And then it reads the notifications before it pre-prepare the both of the enlistments and prepares both of the enlistments. So here we do not want to commit complete yet because we want the vulnerable function to send notification through our enlistments. So we need them to still exist. However, when we're going to hit a key, it's going to basically create this additional thread that we've just seen that will basically um, close the enlistment and commit it. So really, uh, once you have defined the breakpoint, you can hit a key and this thread will take care of freeing the enlistment and you should see the user have to free in the debugger. Okay, now it's your turn.